Hello everyone, this is your friend Dr. Faz with a new episode of Live with Dr. Faz. Hope you have a great Memorial Day weekend. Uh, today uh, we have a guest who is in software technology and she's a customer success management which is quite new for me so we are going to learn all about that and she's a multi-talented multicultural multilingual and she's a great speaker she's a part of toastmasters organization so please help me welcome my guest mrs vidya shatal welcome vidya to our show thanks for joining us hello dr fast thanks for having me yeah it's my pleasure so tell me vidya for our viewers uh, who is vidya mm-hmm. Yeah. So, hello everyone. Whoever is watching now, who is going to watch later on, I am Vidya Shetter, and I am a customer success manager by profession. I have been in the software field for almost 15 years now. I have started my career though as a science graduate, hoping to go into the field of microbiology and maybe become a doctor like Dr. Fals. But somehow, destiny had something else for me, and. I changed tracks to be in the software field. I did my masters in computer management. That was a complete change of track for me and uh, I think I don't regret that decision now after 15 years in software field. I have changed a lot of tracks in software itself. I have been a trainer, I have been a programmer, I have been an analyst and now currently I am a customer success manager helping people in software. so you say customer success management hmm. can you elaborate that to because this is new to me too so hopefully people are going to be uh, anxious to find out what is that about mm-hmm. yes and this term is i thought when we changed roles like in our organization we were known as enterprise program managers before mm-hmm. and we used to handle contracts for we still handle contracts or customers uh, on a enterprise level but this customer success manager role or this term it's recent in the industry but it's catching a lot of buzz wow. if you look at amazon google microsoft mm-hmm. any of these big enterprises have this role defined if you are a customer success manager you are going to work with a certain accounts uh, you work with certain customers and you help the customers in their journey if whatever product your company has for example our company has a product which helps in manufacturing or process industry so as a customer success manager i make sure they get value out of the implementation they have for our product and you played a lot of different roles in in this uh, technology software mm-hmm. uh, which part or which role was more exciting like analytical mm-hmm. part or managing mm-hmm. part or the thing which you are doing now Oh. Yeah, that's a great question and uh, when I started I was just a lab assistant working in you know a small lab mm-hmm. and I started with my teacher the teacher from my master's degree she recommended me and she had this training institute I used to help students there as a lab assistant just mm-hmm. getting you know getting to know the basics of software I learned a lot in that role I moved on to analyst role and mm-hmm. then to a trainer and then customer success manager but to pick one role out of that is really difficult each role has taught me something and if i see customer success manager maybe because it's the current role mm-hmm. i can say that's my favorite because it's giving a different skill set to me mm-hmm. a skill set to be more um, more public facing more in the speaker uh, capacity which skill i didn't you know if you know the programming field or it field most of us are behind the computer of course there's not much need to you know be in front of people and you can manage a lot of things through phone or through emails but this role is exposing you know me to a lot of these opportunities where i'm growing so i can say maybe this is one of my favorite roles so far So do you agree with that statement about these software guys that they don't have people skills? I do agree to a certain extent 
we do have people skills but they are rusted a lot of times because we don't put them to use and there are really less opportunities a lot of times to put them to use be it because of the technologies available now like you can just not turn on your camera and you can be still talking and communicating and get the work done so i do agree with that statement a little bit so tell me about when you were growing up were you introverted or extroverted growing up i had phases i can say like till my elementary i was a chatty kid and mm-hmm. my anyone came to our house i would be the one taking over whatever discussion it is and i was too chatty is what my mom says and a lot of my aunts uh, agree with her and they used to say like we used to get tired of like you used to speak so much <laughs> then came a phase where i i was like became an introvert because more more into studies and just uh, changing from one you know grade to another i became more introverted so uh, where were you born i was born in pune which is a south western state ah, yeah, uh, city been, yeah. in india uh, if you know mumbai and i know no no, no i've been there just to see uh-huh. guru rajneesh ashram there oh really oh, yeah wow. in yeah, 1992 Wow, that's an interesting. Thing. Yeah, no, I was I was one of the curious guy wanted uh-huh. to attend the session. Wow. So, so I yeah. traveled there. Wow, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a beautiful place, yeah, and it's very close to Bombay. Mhm. Uh so did you get all your education in India or Yes, so I did all my bachelor's, masters, uh, everything in India and I moved out of India only after my marriage. Okay, so you met your sweetheart there in india yeah okay <laughs> so is he from the same t- uh, industry or yes so my husband is in software too and he was the one who got me into this particular product that i am supporting now so we both are in the same industry and it is a lot to do with the what do we call sensor based data which is a buzz now nowadays so you guys don't talk just email each other in other words yeah. <laughs> or text or email that's that's it, that's it. <laughs> because the computer guys i mean they are always on computers so they yeah. just send messages yeah you can uh, forget to talk that's true <laughs> yeah. yeah so tell me a little bit uh, when did you come uh, when did you move from india let's go from there mm-hmm. where did you go first yes yeah, so in 2005 i moved to uh, very special country in the world saudi arabia oh wow and i was in saudi arabia in 2005 for 9 months mhm how did you find there i think it was a eye opening experience for me and being in india growing up in india i thought mm-hmm. all the world is same but yeah. i got to experience a different culture and uh, it just um, it was a learning experience too like how strictly people follow so many things which is very difficult and as a society everyone follows the same rules so that was really amazing to yeah. watch there okay. so uh, and so you you went for the work by yourself or whole family moved there so my husband used to work in saudi arabia and okay. i joined him after our marriage and mm-hmm. that's how i got to experience that country okay and then from there where did you go So after spending our time in Saudi we moved to a neighboring country Bahrain which oh, is yeah. mm-hmm. just like half an hour drive from Saudi and there is a causeway which which connects to Saudi and Bahrain so mm-hmm. they are so close but i got to experience a different middle eastern culture there and dr faz you might have seen like the difference in various middle eastern countries Bahrain is a little bit open yeah. and there is lot of presence of expats So mm-hmm. I didn't miss a lot of things that are it's mm-hmm. almost like being in Mumbai. Yeah. I felt. And yeah, it's yeah. more yeah. liberal there and all that. Yeah. 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 And even I mean overall people are different and they are a little cool as compared to the warm blooded in Saudi. Yes. Because I've been there too so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, so from there you moved to from Bahrain to Uh, so from Bahrain I spent almost 6 years in Bahrain and oh, um, the the move from Saudi happened because my husband got another job in Bahrain mm-hmm. same product but 
different company and we thought okay let's move and see what's the opportunities and our mantra has always been never say no to any opportunity yeah. and that's how we took the challenge moved to bahrain spent 7 years there mm-hmm. but when the middle eastern uprising started it was a little bit of scary time and we didn't know what's going to happen and that the same time my husband got an opportunity in us and we moved to us that time that was in december 2012 wow and we have been in us for last 7 years now mm-hmm. so how do you see here how you feel here yes so it is very interesting before coming to us i had a different picture in my brain because it's all what i saw in media it's like mm-hmm. everyone in us is rich everything is like mm. up like everything is really um, you know like uh, the richest country in the world so my expectation was very different but i liked uh, things i liked here is everyone is very professional things get done if they are going to be getting done like if there is a time someone gives you that time is followed that something was very impressive but then like it is being a richest country too there are poor people there are homeless yeah. people that is something i never knew before coming to us but I, i i have got to experience different cultures and could see the difference in us a lot how many kids you have uh, i have two boys uh, 14 year and 14 year old is going to high school next year yeah. and my younger one is 10 who is going to middle school next year oh, that's cool so how they like here Yes so my older one has memories from Bahrain and he does remember going to India a lot from, from Bahrain and that's something he misses but after these 7 years i can say my older one is more like us is his home mm-hmm. he doesn't feel anything else is his home and he loves the culture here and the weather everything about us so he is more or less now a us kid he doesn't Yeah. want to go anywhere else yeah he's american right <laughs> now yeah <laughs> that's what happens when you see when kids they come in certain age mm-hmm. and after a few years they just adopt the everything yeah. like people like me and you who came from another mm-hmm. culture we mm-hmm. still have a little bit roots in us but yep. they, this is yep. all for them yep. so tell me a little bit about like uh, why did you join toastmasters Right so I did attend a training in my current company and uh, the trainer there suggested like for everyone she was it was a presentation skills class is in general for everyone and she suggested that there is something like toastmasters and you all can go and just practice your skills and it's a really open supportive platform uh, which you don't have to invest more but you do get a lot of out of it and that's how i thought about joining toastmasters and how that, that's see, where it started sorry but well, how do you see it's beneficial or not i do see it's beneficial and the reason for that i can say is any speaker needs to practice if you don't practice even if you are a great speaker you can just lose track of things you can just not think about what things are current and what mistakes you might be doing where there is a scope for improvement and toastmasters has given me that and i see a lot of people benefiting from it and that is inspirational and that keeps me going so are you holding a position right now for in club correct no i don't hold a position currently uh, this year has been busy for me i recently changed job so i was just giving a time and getting to know the toastmasters organization itself but uh, next year i feel like i am more or less settled in my job and i can take new responsibilities oh yeah no that, that's a good way to move up as a leader mm-hmm. uh, so tell me i mean uh, if somebody would like to go the same uh, profession like you are in mm-hmm. what you would suggest them how they could start in Yes so someone uh, asked me a question recently in a training class like what is one important skill that any student whatever profession they want to go should have and the answer i gave to that question is public speaking so i feel i cannot stress enough for that skill in my particular role customer success manager mm-hmm. you need to be a great communicator you need to be able to be 
present uh, be able to present really nicely to the customer you should have skills to absorb the product you can be supporting today product a tomorrow you can move to another company supporting product b mm-hmm. so you should be able to learn you should have that appetite and the uh, skills to learn new things so public speaking learning new things and multitasking is one another aspect for this role i feel so do you like multitasking i don't like uh, to be frank i don't like multitasking because we all have so much on our plate nowadays we have family we have mm. parents we have our own health mm. and then on the job if you say like oh you need to multitask mm. i will not like it but i feel any job nowadays is mm. it does require multitasking task thinking to some extent so i think one needs to learn to adapt and just to divide your priorities and uh, just balance and give equal time to everything yeah because it's a very difficult thing to keep yep. you focus on certain mm-hmm. things and yep. sometimes people rather than getting things done they just mm-hmm. destroy the whole thing because of multitasking yeah so yes. it's not an easy thing and i usually don't prefer to do that but you have no choice certain times you yeah. have to do it yeah. and specifically the way my profession is same thing mm-hmm. like yours mm-hmm. all the time people are just approaching and yeah. if you don't respond at the same time then so tell me a little bit like uh, uh, do you read books i have to be frank i have maybe that's the excuse i have been saying i don't have time to read books mm-hmm. and now what with the co- thing we mm-hmm. all like what how, what is the next thing we can make our life interesting with mm-hmm. so what i started now is reading a simple series the harry potter series and i'm reading with my kids and yeah. if you ask me i i don't read books but i do la- read blogs and yeah. all those things but not a avid reader though so do you write blogs or something yourself too uh, no right now no but that is something that's a good idea you have given me now yeah yeah because if the, you have a skill and if you don't uh, put it out mm-hmm. so it's going to be dying inside so yep. it's better to just write it up and yep. it's going to help others to understand and learn yeah well that's a that's a great that's a great concept and <laughs> i've heard someone like uh, one of my colleague was talking about how she follows this blog uh on wines different wines because she likes different like testing different wines and she has been following this blog of a lady who writes about just wine yeah, yeah. So i mean uh, i know a lot of friends and uh, uh-huh. they they just do the same thing like they write whatever comes in their mind yeah. it has no relevance to whatever mm-hmm. they do for living but it's just a state of mind they tell people and people get attracted to them wow new idea yeah. nothing said So uh, tell me a little bit about uh, how somebody can raise two teenagers because now you're <laughs> almost <there. laughs> so that's a very important skill. Yes. Having at once two teenagers uh-huh. is going to be a very <laughs> Yes, different. I agree and um, I remember in our last meeting Dr. Fads uh, we spoke about parenting and specifically parenting for this first gener- generation americans who have come from this conservative you know mm-hmm. upbringing and certain values which i have grown up where my parents decided what i need to study where i need to go and what's good for me and changing that now coming uh, to this country where everyone has their opinion everyone has you know like a say in what to do Mm. I'm seeing already with my kids like my older one he's already like showing those qualities I can say which are really good as a human being like you can grow and you can achieve more of your potential if you have a say in what you want to do so I feel that's going to be a challenge for me just to accept that fact and present it in a certain way where I do play a part in my kids decisions but don't enforce them like what my parents did it was good back then but in current culture or current times i think we should give the kids more freedom to decide and find out their passion and succeed so as long as 
i feel we support them and we explain them where they are going wrong and where they are going right what opportunities are there i think that that is the base for at least parents who have first generation in a different country in a different culture gosh yeah so if uh, let's assume you get mm-hmm. back to the last 20 years we, if you get an opportunity to live again what mm-hmm. you could do different oh that's a very nice question yeah if i get to go 20 years back i would really take on take more risks as far as career is concerned mm-hmm. and learn different skills i did try like in my career do i even if i say like i am in computers for 15 years when i started there was a recession around 2000 1999 and 2000 and that's the time i changed track and went to computers instead of microbiology because that's where more jobs were and that's what my parents thought is good mm-hmm. but um, later on i stopped taking many risks i did uh, sell insurance for some time because i did, i was out of job uh, in the it and because of the y2k bug and all everything like mm-hmm. collapsed and we didn't have those jobs in india mm-hmm. so i did take those risks but now when i look at the young generation and how varied professions they try how many different things they try in life and how that grooms them for their adulthood and how much confident they become so i feel if you send me back 20 years i will take more risk and try different you know different professions because before making up my mind to be in a certain stream so tell me where do you see yourself in next 10 years yeah so till now i haven't done any um, i didn't like like being a lead or you know just uh, guiding a team i feel that's something i want to try in these 10 years i want to be more healthy and stay fit mm-hmm. and be passionate about whatever i do be passionate about whether i be in this customer success uh profession or go to some other software related or any profession in this 10 years i want to see myself grow as a leader so let's go to the lighter side of life we mm-hmm. didn't talk very serious stuff uh, things yes uh, uh, what do you do for recreation yes so recreation as you might have guessed with my two young kids my recreation and all my weekends and activities are mostly around them and i try to i try to find fun in what we all do as a family so most of the recreation is going out with the kids be it uh, water parks which are very big in us oh, like yeah. go to hershey park and lot of water parks Dorney, here uh, Dorney yes Dorney. Yeah. yeah and uh, i have become a fan of star wars because of my kids uh-huh. and we do watch those movies whenever those come out here awesome. and be um to be in touch with my uh, culture and my roots i do watch a lot of bollywood movies as you know mm. parts <laughs> so i keep myself uh, entertained by watching yeah. bollywood so uh, what kind of movies you like in bollywood uh, right now i think bollywood is growing like to a different direction there are a lot of quality movies being made and uh, there are lots of uh, humorous comedy movies so I do enjoy those light-hearted movies where I don't you know cry and all so yeah. come out like refreshed so lot of movies um, Irfan Khan is my favorite actor and yeah, he recently fan. passed away yeah. so I watched lot of his movies no he, he was he, he was a great actor no question mm-hmm. about it and he did very well in Hollywood too yes yeah yeah, yeah. so oh, so who, what other heroes and heroines you like in Bollywood you like like them yes yeah, so uh, you give me like two yeah, names so, uh, <laughs> yes yeah, so my choices changed my likings have changed as i have grown and i see i like more of um, method actors like irfan khan um, a lot of movies uh, of amir khan i like nowadays mm-hmm. and before it used to be different and uh, if you ask me actresses i like uh, deepika padukone a lot yeah 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 that's uh, she's she's pretty And yeah she, she works very really well yes. yeah yeah so no i mean because bollywood is big in india yes it's like yeah. every week there is a new face in bollywood oh my gosh i mean when <laughs> i was visiting india uh-huh. i never thought that 
people are going to be that crazy about watching movies every every yeah. Friday when the yeah. oh people oh my mm-hmm. god but yeah. i mean it, that's the only entertainment probably they have there yeah. uh, yeah. watching movies yeah. yeah because i never saw that kind of craze anywhere right. in the rest of the world that's but okay. yeah yeah and that's the uh, reason the mm-hmm. these like uh, bollywood is so yeah and uh, your best industry there and if you look like in any of the countries i have been to except saudi mm-hmm. every country had a bollywood movie you go out to theaters and you could watch a bollywood movie even mm-hmm. uh, regional movies from india oh yeah, yeah. yeah i have here right next door to my house uh-huh everybody comes there in oaks oh yes yeah that's yeah, where i live like i can walk there oh okay great that's yeah that's where i live but I see I mean all the time they have couple movies already yeah, yeah on in that day. so mm-hmm. uh what would you like to share as a message to people mm-hmm. what they should do in this covid-19 and uh post covid-19 how mm-hmm. the things are going to be what do you suggest I think um it's it's been now almost 2 plus months here in US and around the world we have seen like lockdowns are going going to happen like they are happening in india it's been almost one month over now they have locked down and what i think people should learn from this is respect each other more and respect and value what you have achieved what whatever you have got from life be thankful to whomever you believe like in god and be thankful and um, try to spread that happiness and cheer once you are out of the lockdown be a responsible citizen when you are in lockdown try to wear masks wherever you go and uh, that's the only way i feel like if we can be a little bit safer ourselves and spread that everywhere it's it's going to get over sooner than later and come out of it as a strong person take it as a strength not as your weakness that you survive this long lockdown mm-hmm. and uh, don't think that you are getting depressed like big lot of news around now like oh people will get depressed kids will get depressed and there are so many programs happening oh you should do this that but just take it as a downtime you have mm-hmm. and invest that time to improve yourself be oh. it like speaking skills acquire a new skill because no like we haven't ever had no one ever had this kind of free time and yeah. this is the best time to use and whatever yeah. you want to achieve yeah, you can reveal yourself this is a perfect mm-hmm. timing and you can manage uh, so many things mm-hmm. because you are sitting at home so you, you don't have to drive on street and yep. sitting in traffic and all that so much so, time yeah so the, tell me about this because i feel like a uh, post covid 19 we are going to have a little more virtual life than mm-hmm. real life because yep. everything is going to be online everything is like uh-huh. we are just talking more we are going to be leaning towards that so is, is this going to hurt the humanity is this going to hurt our uh, civic sense or those things or socializing because we are not going to be socializing that much mm-hmm. for a long time people are going to be scared of each other Yep. Uh, so how is going to affect the coming generation and also ourselves too? Mm-hmm. What do you think? Yeah, I feel with this 2 months of lockdown, I am already comfortable working from home because I get so much done. Uh I can balance family and work. I have more time to concentrate on healthy eating and healthy living and same for my family. What I see when I talk to my friends and colleagues, a lot of people are get in comfortable in this zone where they have their own you know like privacy they have their own time they can decide their schedules and i feel there is a chance that we might get too comfortable in this and we may not want to go back to work and okay i have to sit in a certain spot be tied to that spot and i don't have, have access to say hot meals which i can prepare at home or that extra chore i can get done so maybe there is a risk of people being too comfortable being away from all that you know social environment we have in office or in our other public life so yeah. there is that i feel professionally uh, if you get too comfortable there is that risk of you know losing that interest in interacting with your coworkers which is a 
big risk because you learn so much from your coworkers and your day to day you know even the uh, coffee room talks you learn so much oh yeah oh yeah all the gossips we learn from yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is every morning when you go there people are complaining cursing and all yeah. that and within 5 minutes you know where the company is going what's happening with the product what's the biggest yeah. issue you don't need to spend time so yeah that's what i'm saying yeah it's a, all the summary you get like within few yes. minutes yeah. yeah no i mean that's what my concern is like after this covid-19 if that's going to be the life it's going to hurt a little bit in mm-hmm. that sense that we are going to be unsocialized and yep. our human s- skills will be a little bit less than whatever we had yep. and i feel that once in a while like when in mm-hmm. last two and a half months mm-hmm. i mean i i just visited one place this morning mm-hmm. and i saw people were like not friendly mm-hmm. yeah because they are not used to people around <laughs> yeah because that's what i'm saying so we are losing like our those skills like a human yes. skills and i think mm-hmm. Hold on, hold on. I'm a client. I'm a customer here. Yes. Nobody is friendly there. Yeah, that's true. And I, I, I feel it's not just our like professionals, but even you know, like when you are not working, you are staying home. It still affects your life because you don't have those mm-hmm. other passive social interactions. Also, in this lockdown, you're not mm-hmm. going to the grocery store that often. You're not going to the parks. you're yeah. not just walking and saying like you know greeting the stranger so i think that that is going to be a little tricky mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. people who are not working for kids falling back in routine is going to be the most trickiest i feel oh, yeah they- i believe yeah because uh, they won't be happy to go back to school and yes. get it up at 6:30 in the 6:30, morning yes. waiting for buses yes they, they would like to sit at home and do whatever yes. they can That's I mean, it's more like a peaceful for parents too. Mm-hmm. You don't have to worry all day long. Mm-hmm. He, my son, did he eat or not? And this and that. Now it's right in front of your eyes. Mm-hmm. You know what they're doing. Yeah, and you can control better. Yep. Because uh, yeah, but I mean, I mean, but that's going to be the life. I believe the norms will be mm-hmm. totally different. Not. Mm-hmm. We are not going to have the same. like we had in december 19 but uh, this is going to be yeah. yeah history will be written in future and we'll be the witnesses and we will be telling these stories yes like we were there in covid times yeah. this is good and, yeah, and we have seen that time we were at home for 3 months 6 uh-huh. months 4 yeah. months yeah so uh, yeah it's going to be uh, like so we are one of those yeah that's what i tell my kids like when you grow up you can tell this story to your grandkids and your kids like yeah. we appreciate you we say we have seen <laughs> what's <Yeah, that. laughs> yeah. what the worst could be and we had it yeah. and and it was still fun yep yeah That's we were not okay. nervous we yep. kept it mm-hmm. so any message you would like to give anybody around the world because it's going to be a broadcast and in so many countries we have followers they watch it so yeah, mm-hmm. yeah so it's all yours i mean you have couple minutes to give any message if you'd like so uh, looking at all the experience what i have had and looking at this situation we all are experiencing covid one thing i want everyone to uh, uh, appreciate is life mm-hmm. and it is precious appreciate your life if you are getting up next morning appreciate that you are alive appreciate the roof you have appreciate the food you have the family friends be happy and when you are happy you spread that cheer around yourself you make yourself available for success and also that spreads around people can see that you are enjoying your life you are happy and that just catches up with everyone and whole experience of your life will become you know more better if you just believe and be thankful to whatever you have in whichever situation yeah it's a gratitude and gratitude is the must yeah. even in this bad time yep we learned so many great things mm-hmm. and obviously it gave us an opportunity to sit with our family longer than usual mm-hmm. and we didn't even realize what we were missing yes that's yeah. true yep yeah, and spending that much time with mm-hmm. your own family and your own kids yeah, yeah. no one yeah, no one thought yeah, about we, it. yeah we were taking that those things mm-hmm. granted 
Yeah. Now we realize how important was that. So hopefully, I mean, things will be better and uh, we will be back to not the same normals, but new norms. Yeah. And, uh, again, tough time never lasts. Tough people do always. I like that quote a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's my favorite too. Yeah. Actually, that uh, quote I took very first time when I was mm-hmm. ready to write my book. Mm-hmm. So that was my title, and then I didn't realize that Robert Schuler already had this. Oh, okay. So then I have to change, and now <laughs> my new title is "Find Your Nose." Oh, that's an interesting title. Yeah, so that's going to be my new book, which is going nice. to be published as soon as COVID nineteen gets over. Oh, great! Really, yeah, yeah, it's ready to go. Thank you very much, Vidya, for joining us uh, this evening, and it was a great pleasure to chat with you and hope. Uh, we will. You will join us again after a little bit, and we are going to start a new show uh, in the month of June. So I would like to invite you again, but that's going to be like a more. Uh, we are going to have three people or four people to discuss certain things. Wow. So in that format. But uh, thank you very much. I appreciate your time, and uh, you were so generous. So hopefully, I'll see you very soon. Thank you, Dr. Fars, for having me, and it was a pleasure. And uh, you are, uh, you know, like a role model, and you are a great mentor. A lot to learn from you, and thanks for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, viewers, for joining us. Uh, it was an amazing uh, sea story how she moved from India to different countries, and she's a successful, you say, the first generation now in American, <clears throat> but uh, kids are.